All right, so we are going to start the lecture on lab two. In lab two, we'll talk about multi precision addition and decimal adjust. Okay. Now, in sh in in simple words, what we are doing is this: we are simply trying to add two BCD numbers. Remember, I think you, you saw the BCD numbers, right? Remember in the digital circuit class, we talked about the BCD numbers. But to be very simple, BCD numbers are just decimal numbers. You can just simply think these are decimal numbers, okay? So let's say whatever the microprocessor we have using the set of the microprocessor, how can we add these two numbers? Look at the numbers. I wrote two numbers here. Two three one two five six plus nine seven three seven one eight. Now, what is the problem we have here? What will be the problem if we try to add these two numbers? First problem is, if you look at the both of the numbers, the both of the numbers has six digit each. This is a trouble, right? Because remember, all the accumulators we have, those can take only one bytes, right? Now. Thinking about the six digit is in hex. This is not a hex number though, but just think it as a hex because all numbers we think is in a hex and you need three bytes for, for saving each of the numbers and which is a trouble, right? Another trouble is, this is the trouble one. The second trouble is, uh, as I said, these are decimal numbers, the BCD numbers, binary coded decimal. But just think this is a de these are decimal numbers. The problem is, if we try to add, we can add hex numbers, right? You know, at the end, is, 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 the instruction is in, you know, I'm saying everything is in binary, but you can just, you cannot just add right away these, because if you try to add, you will get a hex, hex sound, not the decimal sound. That's the problem number two. So we'll be dealing with both of these problems here, and we'll show you, still, we'll should, we'll, we will be able to, uh, fix it, meaning we'll be able to get the sum in decimal. Now, what we need to know for this? We might need some technique, right? Some trick, some, uh, you know, let's say instructions maybe, right? What do we need to know? Number one, we need to know how to perform multi-precision addition. See, remember, as I said, why, why we're talking about multi-precision? Because you have, let's say, each number, which are three byte in long in hex, right? Now, how, how you add three byte together? You cannot add three byte together, right? So you probably will start from the lowest byte and do some tricks and go all the way, you know, to the to, to the left side. So that's one trick we need to know. Uh, second is how to add decimal numbers because we know that our microprocessor cannot add BCD numbers again. Again, for this lecture thing, the BCD numbers are actually the decimal numbers. BCD numbers are originally decimal numbers. We write those as binary, but these are decimal numbers. And number three, we need to know how to display it, because at the end, we need to display the sum. I'm saying, remember the, the uh, labs we did in lab one? You have a black screen, right? So, uh, uh, not the black screen, the terminal screen. In the terminal screen, you want to display the result, let's say, the sum, okay? How do you display it? Now, let's just start with one problem at a time. Let's first talk about the multi-position addition. Let's see how we add two numbers. Now, to, when we are talking about the multi-position addition, we are not thinking about the decimal numbers. So, at the beginning, let's say we have two hex numbers, okay? Just to be a little bit simple, we just think we have two hex numbers, okay? Now, let's say we want to add both of the hex numbers. Now, look at the hex numbers here. These are two byte each. You see the problem here? Now, anytime if we have something more than one byte, that is a real trouble because think about the accumulators we have. Accumulator A, accumulator B, both are one byte each, right? That's, that's one of the major trouble we have. Now, what we can do? We can first start uh, working with the accumulator A and B, 
okay? But how do we actually add this? We can start with the lower byte first, right? Let's say, you see, the, the, what is the lower bytes? For this number, what is the lower byte? A3, right? Right? And for the other number, what is the lower byte? B9, right? So what we can do is, we can probably first try to add the lower numbers, right? Just like this one. Look at this, how we add the number, okay? So we can add the lower number A3 and B9. We get a result 5C, but there is a trouble. The trouble is, if you add A3, B9, there will be a carry, right? At the end, there is a carry of one. Do you see there is a problem here? There is a carry of one. So that means once you're done adding A3 and B9, you will have a, have a sum of 5C, but let's say in the next step, you probably will be adding the higher bytes, but you need to consider the carry you had probably from the previous bytes. Do you see the problem here? But the good news is we have an instruction in the set of instruction, the name of the instruction is uh, ADCA. So what we are going to do is, we'll first add the lower bytes using ADDA. Because you see, if you go to the set of instruction, you will see ADDA can add A plus B, okay, and put the sum in into A, okay. So let's say you you have added both, and you put the sum into A, okay. But you have a carry. How do you know you have a carry? Because you know the result, and there will be carry flex set, right? There will be carry flex set. But there is a separate instruction, which is ADCA. This actually add A plus your data plus whatever the carry you have. So for adding the higher bytes, you can always add, use ADCA instead of ADDA. So if you if you use ADCA, what happens is, let's say when you add 1, 7, and C3, which are the higher bytes, you will be using ADCA. The good news is if you use ADCA, it will add 17 plus C3 plus 1, because your carry is already 1. So you don't even have to check whether the carry is set or not. If the carry is set, 1 will be added. Carry is not set, 0 will be added. So that's not a problem, okay? Now, let's see what we are. So this is, okay. So this might solve our problem for uh, multi-precision, um, multi-bytes number, meaning if your number is more than one byte, you can always, always do it like this. You can just add the lower bytes using the first lower byte. You can always add ADD using ADDA. Once you are done with the addition, you can save the result somewhere, right? And load the higher bytes into A and B, add the higher bytes again, you see what I'm saying? And then save it to somewhere. But remember, every higher byte, whenever you'll be adding, you'll be using the instruction ADCA instead of ADDA. Do you see what I'm saying? Because you always want to consider the carry you might have from the previous bytes. Okay? Now that means. This is the good news that if your number is long, longer than one byte, you can always use this trick, and you can keep adding the numbers no matter how long it is. But we still have a problem. The problem is we know that we can add the long numbers, but we don't know how to add the decimal numbers, because if you add, you know, all the addition will be done in hex, right? Me meaning hex, you know, hex addition. So, and, and we know that the BCD numbers are decimal numbers. So how we can add this? We know that we cannot add it. Why? Because uh, the problems occur when you, uh, when you add two number, but get a sum greater than nine. Because the problem is, if, you, if your sum is more than nine, what happens? It might be A, B, C, D, e, okay, E, F. You know, we don't have those digits in decimal, right? That's a trouble. You cannot add this. So, for an example, if you think about this sum, okay, let's say f 7 plus 5, which is C, which is write it in hex, right? But how about if it is a decimal number, 5 and 7? Your result should be what? 12, right? 
what I'm saying? If you add 15 plus 26, the result should be what? 41 in decimal. Don't forget the decimal edition now. But you know, this is 3B is in X, right? So that's a, that's a trouble. So how we fix it, OK? To fix this instruction, the good news is we have an instruction, a set of instruction, which is called decimal adjust. The instruction is is an inherent instruction that is DAA. If you go to the set of instruction, if you just open it right now, you will find DAA, which is called decimal adjust. This instruction is actually designed to fix uh, this sort of uh, problem. Okay. Now, for an example, what it does is like this. Look at this instruction. Remember, we just did some previous instructions, like 7 plus 5, we got C, 15 plus 26, we got 3B, 39 plus 38, we got 71. None of those sum, sum was right, OK? None of the sum was right. But to fix it, look at the magic here. To fix all the sum, all you need to do is just add 6, OK? Just add 6 with the columns, you have the wrong digit. OK? Look at this one, OK? You just add 6 here, you get 12, which is actually the decimal sum. See what I'm saying? Look at the second one again. You just add 6, which is fixed. Third one, you added 6, is fixed. Now, now this is a magic trick, but the, but the good, good news is decimal adjust can fix the sum. If you keep the sum in A, it can fix it. You actually do not have to add 6 for the, with this sum, because decimal adjust can take care of this, meaning it, it actually adds the 6 and fix the sum. You know what I'm saying? Decimal adjust is an inherent instruction. If you go to the same instruction, you can see DAA is an inherent instruction, but it can fix all of this. Okay? Now let's look at how it actually works. Now, let's say you added two numbers, OK? Automatically, the sum is in hex. That will be always that, like that, right? So, but you want to have the BCD sum, meaning the decimal sum, just by adding 6 to them. So, but you don't have to actually add 6, OK? But you know, the technique is you will actually add 6 to every illegal BCD digit in the sum. Now, what do I mean by the illegal digit? See, all the digit. Those are like A, B, C, D, E, F. Those are hex digits, right? And none of these, these digits are, you know, are, are applied to the decimal numbers, right? So all these digits are considered illegal in BCD. So what we are going to do is we actually add 6 to each and every uh, illegal digit. Okay, that's the rule number one, and rule number two is add six to every digit in the sum that had a carry of one to the next higher digit. Again, add six to every digit in the sum that had a carry of one to the next higher digit. That means, for an example, if I go back to this example again. Look at this example here. We added 6 to C, right? Because C was an illegal digit. We added 6 with B because the B was an illegal digit. But here, look at this one. This was 71, right? So 7 and 1, none of the digits are illegal, right? But we still added 6. Why? Because we have to add a 6 with every column when there is a carry of 1 to the next column. Look at this column here. You added actually 9 plus 8. That makes how much? If you think about in hex, 9 plus 8 was what, 17? So you subtracted 16, right? So that means there was a carry in the next column. If you have a carry in the next column, still you have to add 6 to that column. Do you see what I'm saying? That's the rule number 2. So even if that is not an hex, not, not, not an illegal digit, OK? But don't forget, the decimal adjust only works in accumulator A. 
it can only fix the sum if you keep the sum in accumulator A. So you actually have to keep the sum in A. If it is not in A, you first have to move it to the A, and then you just write decimal as just DAA. Now DAA is, is, is an inherent instruction, so you don't have any operand, right? And if you just call DAA, it automatically fix the sum which you actually stored in accumulator A, loaded into accumulator A, okay? So, you know, again, that's the example we have. So, again, decimal adjust does not work for subtraction. It doesn't work for hex, hexadecimal arithmetic. It only works for BCD, binary coded decimal, okay? Now, let's look at some more exciting examples here. Now, let's say we have two sums here. How we can fix it, okay? Look at the, look at the sum here. Left side, we have a sum. We're trying to add 93 plus 25. Look at the look at the original sum. Say if we just do the add, the add, add it to uh, like in decimal, you know that 93 plus 25 will make 118, right? But the problem is in the computer, using the microprocessor and set of instruction we have, if you add 93 plus 25, actually the result you will get is B8. Because the result, again, the result will be in hex, right? Right, that will be B8. Now, let's say I want the result in decimal. How do I fix it? I'll just follow the rules, right? Remember, I have two rules, right? One rule is what? You will have to add six with every single column where you have an illegal digit, right? Look at the B8. Which one is illegal here? I marked it red. B is illegal, right? So I added six with B. Do you see what I'm saying? So I added six with B, not with eight. Because eight was a legal digit, so I added six, and once I added six, I got a carry. <coughs> but still, the result is right, right? <coughs> Even if I got a carry, the result was what? 118, right? Which was the right result for, for adding 93 plus 25, right? Which is right. Now, if you look at the second one, I had a big, a little bit longer number. Right, uh, 2969 plus 8713. Again, I have to fix it, let's say. Now, which columns I will be adding 6 with? I added 6 with column C. I'm saying column with the, the, the column with the, with the sum, uh, sum digit C, because C is the illegal digit. I added 6 with B, because B is an illegal digit as well. But why do I, did I add 6 with columns with 0? Zero is not an illegal digit, right? But the problem is, this column has, has a carry of one, right? To the next column. Do you see there is a carry? Because this is nine plus seven, right? Do you see there is a carry? Remember, that was the rule number two, right? If you have a column where you have a carry to the next column, that column must be added six, right? So I added six with that column to fix it. Now, once I, I did that, I, with including the carry, my result become 11,682 in decimal, which is actually the right result for this sum. So, but the good thing is, all you have to do is just call decimal adjust. That will automatically fix it. You don't actually have to add 6606, but you need to know how, how it is fixed. Okay? We need to know how we fix, how, how the decimal adjust actually works. Okay? Now let's say, let's try some more uh, examples here. Let's say, so far we understand how decimal adjust works, okay? But now let's look at the code, meaning how we write the code to fix it. We, we have some idea, right, how we fix it. We put it in A, uh, we also use B, we, uh, we have some sum, and then we also fix it. I'm saying using the decimal adjust, but let's look at more closely, okay? Now let's say we have two numbers, BCD numbers. Again, we are trying to add 16 plus 48. Don't forget that these are decimal addition, but you know, at the beginning, the microprocessor will treat this number in hex, right? If you even try in decimal. The 16 plus 48, your sum should be what? 64, right? Your sum should be 64. Now, let's first start, right? So let's say an, uh, somebody gave me this number, these two numbers and said, can you add this to sum, because these are BCD numbers, and I stored the sum into this memory location. 
which is 0, 0, 4, 0. Okay? How do I actually do the sum? I'll do like this. Look at this, what I did. I first put the number in into accumulator A. One, which one? The one, one of the number I put in accumulator A, right? Let's say I put 16, right? In accumulator B, I put the other number. I'm saying accumulator A, I put the first number. Okay? And then I said A, D, D, A. If I, if I did just do this, A, D, D, A, this, so that means what? 16 and 48 will be added, right? And the sum will be stored into A, right? If you go to your set of instruction, look at A, D, D, A, what it, what it does. It basically adds A plus M, right? Now what is your A here? 16, right? And what is M here? 48. So actually 16 and 48 are added, and the sum is stored into A. But the problem is this. Whatever the sum you have, that is in hex, right? You have to fix it. It's not 64 yet. So you call decimal adjust. Do you see I call decimal adjust? Because I know that the sum is already in accumulator A, right? But the sum is not in decimal. Sum is in hex. So to fix the sum, I just call decimal adjust. I just use DAA. I should not say I call. I just write the instruction DAA. Okay? Now once I do that, I know that the sum is fixed, right? Now I have to copy the sum or store the sum into a memory location. And the memory location was given in the question. It was mentioned that the memory location was 0, 0, 4, 0. So what I did was I stored the sum from accumulator A to memory location 40, right? So now I have the sum there. But the good news is sum is in decimal, so your sum will be actually 64, right? Your sum will be actually 64. Now let's try these with a little bit longer numbers, meaning, as I said, we can, we can actually add more than one byte, right? We know the deep trick. Now, let's look at these two numbers. Now, let's say somebody gave me these two numbers. One is 9645, and other number is 7344. How can I really add these two numbers? Again, as I said, I first start with the lower bytes, right? And, and somebody also mentioned that they stored the whole lower byte into memory location 0072 and the higher byte into memory location 0071. That is given to us, okay? How do I start? I'll first add the lower bytes, right? What are the lower bytes here? 45 and 44, right? Do you see the lower bytes? Now let's, let's do this. This is how I add the lower bytes, right? I first, let's say, put the 45 into accumulator A, right? And then I add 44 with that. You see, this is just the same steps, right? Same lines we just wrote in the last slide to add it one byte, right? And then I did the decimal adjust. Don't forget to do the decimal adjust, OK? And this is the lower byte. And according to the question, I have to store the result into memory location 0072. So I just stored the memory location, stored the result. Now, why I'm trying to store the result? Because, see, I'm trying to store the result because after this step, I'll be again loading the higher byte into A and B, right? And I'll be adding A and B again, and then probably doing the decimal adjust, right? So my lower byte result will be lost, right? Because at this point, the result of the sum of the lower bytes are located in A, right? So that's why what I'm doing is I'm, I'm just adding the lower bytes, doing the decimal adjust, and then storing the lower byte into accumulator A, OK? before I, uh, you know, I start working with the higher byte. So this is how, you know, this is how I did the lower byte. And, and I also stored the result into 0072 memory location, right? Now let's do the higher byte. Now once I do the higher byte, so, you know, it's, it's again the same, right? So what, is the, what are the higher bytes here? 96 and 73, right? So I just loaded 96 here. I just loaded 73 here, right? And then I did the decimal adjust, and I stored the result into 71. Now, there is a little change between the lower byte addition and higher byte addition. Can anyone find what is the difference here? Look at the, notice the difference. Do you see the difference? That's a 
very, very important difference. Why is that? Do you see the difference here? Why the difference is this? Because in the higher bytes, you will be always considering the carry because you might have a carry from the last sum, meaning last addition you did for the lower bytes. Every single addition you did for the lower bytes, you might have a carry, and you always have to add the carry in the higher bytes. Now, the instruction ADCA actually adds the carry with your sum. That means you don't even have to think about the carry, you had the carry or not, because if you had a carry, that means the carry flag was set, automatically the carry will be added. If the carry flag was not set, zero will be added, which doesn't change the result. But to be in safe side, we always use the ADCA for the higher bytes. Do you know what I'm saying? You don't even have to think whether you had a carry or not. Do you know what I'm saying? You, you probably have a carry, right? Or may, uh, I'm saying you, you probably don't even have a carry, right? Or may have a carry, so you don't even have to think, right? You don't care. You just use the you know ADC always. So be careful about these steps, okay? This is a very crucial difference, and make sure you don't forget this because otherwise your sum will not be right. Now, in the lab two, let's look at the code for lab two because you know this is pretty much what we need to know for lab two. Let's look at the code for lab two. You know, again, when we write the code, we make the code a little bit uh, more elegant and formal, so that's why sometimes we add some more stuffs, but it's still the same thing, okay? In the lab, what we did is, we actually used some variables. Think about the variables in C++, you use some variables, right? You define some variable, for an example, you at the beginning of the program, what do you do? You define some integer, you define some float, you might define some characters, right? Some variables, some arrays, right? You start like this, right? Now here, we don't have that kind of variables, you know, diff always used, right? But sometimes we can use some variables. So here, this is an example how we actually use the variables. So we actually have two numbers to add. Now these are the two numbers we are trying to add. Do you see two numbers here? I wrote everything as a comment. These are the two numbers we are adding, actually. 24, 96, 15 is our first number. And the second number is 15, 73, 86. Again, we are considering both of these numbers as decimal numbers, right? And the sum we are expecting is 407031. And that will be a decimal sum, right? Now, how we are actually storing the number? The first number, which is 249645, I'm storing as three variable. Do you see what I'm saying? This is the first number. This is the A1, A2, A3. These are actually like the variables. And if I, if I write like A1 FCB24, that means we are actually declaring a variable, just thinking as, as a variable, A, A1, and storing 24 for A1. That means every time in your program, if you write A1, it will be replaced by 24, which is a good thing, right? You don't have to now write the number every time. So if you write A2, you will, it will always be assumed you are actually writing 96. That means, you know, if you write A3, it will be always like 45. Similarly, for B1, it will be 15. So actually, using A1, A2, and A3, I'm actually writing the first number. B1, B2, B3, I'm writing the second number. Do you see what I'm saying? Okay? This is the second number, B1, B2, and B3, because the number is three byte long, right? Now, for, the, for the storing the result, because you know, I need to also three byte to store the result, right? So I'm reserving some memory byte. This is called reserve memory byte, RMB. That means you are you are you are actually again storing the lower byte here, right? Oh, I'm sorry, the higher byte here, highest byte. This is the middle byte S2. This is the lowest byte S3. Okay? And again, this once means I'm actually reserving one byte for each addition because you know I have to add the lower byte and store it somewhere right that will be one byte location I'll be you know again doing the middle byte addition I'll store it somewhere I'll do the higher byte addition I'll store it somewhere so I'm, I'm reserving three byte okay this is like a variable declaration part like, like your higher high level programming language like C++ okay now here I really started the program at the, at the, at the, at the bottom here so look at, look at what I'm doing I'm actually doing the same thing that I did in the examples so I'm first adding the lower bytes. Do you see lower bytes here? A3 plus B3. 
You see, A3 and B3, those are the lowest bytes, right, for both numbers. So I'm adding the lower bytes. Once I'm adding, I did the decimal adjust. Because I know the sum is already in A, I did the decimal adjust, and then I stored the lower byte into S3. You see what I'm saying? And then I started with, again, A2 and B2. And the remaining part, you have to write it down. I'm saying you know how to write it, right? For each byte, you know how to do that, right? You have the examples. So in the lab, I'll give you the instruction for the lab. You will see this part of the code is given. But do you see something here written? Fill in three missing instructions here, OK? So you'll actually have to fill in the three missing instructions. You have to write the instructions here, OK? So actually, you have to write the instruction for the middle byte, remaining part. You'll have to write the instruction for the higher byte, right? So in for each byte, you'll have to write how many lines? Pretty much like four lines, right? Remember in the last examples you saw, it's like four lines. You first write, load the data into A, and the next line you add this, add it. The third line you do the decimal adjust, and fourth line you actually store the result, right? So that's how you actually write four lines. So you'll be actually filling this part, and that will be actually the the lab lab, lab lab two part one. Okay. Now once we we will be we, we are done with the lab this part. What happens is your result will be stored into some memory locations, right? Remember I said you actually reserve three memory locations here, right? You reserve S1, S2, and S3. These are some memory locations you reserved, and your result is already there. But how do I know what is the result, and how do I see it? To see it, you actually have to see the memory map. See, in the, in the pause, every single time we do some quiz, we see, some, we see the memory map, right? It's given to you. But how do I see the memory map we have in real computer, meaning in our Fox trainer board, the, micro, the memory map of the, of the, of the, of the computer? To, do, to see the memory map, I have, an, I have, an, I have a command, command line instruction, which is called memory dump instruction. In short, that is called MD. If I just do this, if I just write memory dump, it actually displays a range of memory locations. Okay? For an example, if I want to see uh, a range of memory instruction, I write to address. I write 00, let's say I write this, okay? 0015 2A009. So what actually it does is, it actually starts showing from 0010. Why is that? Because it actually shows the whole row, right? You see what I'm saying? How, wh 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 where do your row starts? Let's say you want, to st you want to see memory location 0015, right? You want to see the memory location 0015. Let's say this is 0015. But remember, how do you see the memory map? Where the memory map starts? It always starts from this, right? Let's say 0010, right? So it actually starts showing you from the, it actually shows the whole row. You see what I'm saying? See, so it actually completes the whole row. So that's why it starts from very left side and shows the whole row to the very right side of the last row you want to see. You see what I'm saying? So if you write this instruction, it will actually start showing you from 0010 to all the way to zero A zero zero F. Because it cannot stop at the middle. You see what I'm saying? It actually completes the whole row. So it will actually show you all the rows and everything. Okay? Now, again, we need to understand this part of the lecture and to understand it, uh, again, we'll be going over this lecture. You can always go uh, back and forth and look at the lecture. You can also listen to the uh, lecture integrity. But we also want to make sure we understand it. So we, uh, before we go to the next part, uh, so we actually will be doing the quiz. Before we go to the quiz, do we have any question here? We might have question once we go to the quiz section. So we'll go to the quiz section, and we'll do a pre-lab quiz too, which is actually based on this lecture to understand this lab so that we don't get confused once we go to the lab. And meanwhile, I'll also give you the instruction for the lab. So once you do it, You'll know exactly what to do in the lab. We have all the codes, whatever we have here, reading and the instruction as well. Okay? Let's go to the quiz section and let's do the pre-lab two quiz. And again, just like the other labs, we ha we must have to get 80% in the pre-lab two quiz to start the lab two. 
okay?